Hi guys, Crafty Crystal here. Um, today I'm showing you how to make a rug out of large hexes. These are full foot across. I used, uh, I bought um, one pound of uh, espresso in the Karen yarn and I used uh, almost half I think, not quite half. I used a fraction of the one pound of top I thought I was going to use. So probably a uh, three and a half ounce would be plenty for the this area here. And it looks like I used a little over half of the seven ounce of Red Heart Super Savers. This is in royalty. Um, for these tiles you will need uh, eight to make a strip. Uh, you will need seven if you're going to make a circular hex, one in the middle and one on each of the six sides. Uh, come out with a nice three foot throw rug that way. So I want to show you the particular problem that I have and why I designed this to take care of it and then we're going to sit down and we're going to start and get you going. So grab your yarn, grab your hook and we'll be ready in a minute. Okay, you see this? I've been living with this for three years. I've used every possible cleaner under the sun, including OxyClean. Will not come out, will not stay out. That is deep, nasty, greasy oil from trucks. So, here's my solution. There you go. A little matter of now you see it, now you don't. It totally covers all the black areas. It's custom made to slant in the way I need it to along the back area. Perfect idea. And that's what this video is about. Nice little hex throw rug. So come and join me and we'll sit down and talk about it. Okay, we're going to start this with the magic circle. The way I usually show it is this way, over three fingers, and then over two, and two. You don't really have to use the three, it just makes it easier to access the feed line this way. See how I did that? Come under these two, grab a line. Grab it again, pull it through. Now at this point, you can take your fingers out because your ring isn't going to collapse or fall apart. I'm going to go two more stitches. So I have three after I made my initial pull through. And that'll be my first half double. I made it first double. Okay, now I have a, two doubles chain two, two doubles, chain two, you wrap, go into the circle, grab your yarn, come out, wrap, Pull through two, wrap, pull through two, wrap, and you notice the way I hold my yarn very simple. Just grab my yarn, goes over my finger. These fingers are what holds on, allows the tension. This one just allows me to get my yarn onto my hook. And I can still use this finger to control my work. See? Just like that. Chain one, chain two, Wrap. Wow. 
I can make it as tight as I as loose as I want just by tightening my little back fingers. I have one, two, three, four sets of two on here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put six sets on here. And I'll be back. Okay. I have one, two, three, four, five, six sets. I'm going to go ahead and make my chain two again. Now, I have these two loops here and my loose end. Pull my loose end a little bit and you can see which chain tightened. Pull that one out. This loose end and pull, and you're done. I'm going to go in here. And come down through top chain see there now this time I'm going to turn it chain one, two, wrap, and do a double. Now we are doing what every single corner on here will be until the hexagon is finished, no matter what level we're on. Two, two doubles. Two chains, two doubles. Every corner. Okay? And we're going to go right over to the next corner. Two doubles. Chain two. And two doubles. I'll make two levels of each color. In each band. Okay, we're coming around to our last set. Now, if I were just to go in here to the top of this, it would make this spread out. See that? If I go into the top of this line here and then I come back into the top of my second strand which I don't think I did there. It's the top of my second strand. I do not like these hooks. There. Let's see, it holds them together better. The next step is going to be, and I have one here where I've already put the part in, the uh, loose end in. We're going to add our next color. In this case, the next color is royalty. 
So I'm going to come in here in any corner. Pull my loop through. That really locks that one in. Chain two. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. There. And we're going to do double okay now this time we're going to come right down into in between these two and do a double we're going to come down in between these two sets below make a double come down right into this one and then we're going to make two on the end and that's two three four five six seven seven stitches now we're going to chain two do the same thing on each side. Double. Double into the set below. A double between the sets below. A double into the set below. And two doubles on the end. I'm going to go around and finish this. I'll come back around to the end. See you then. Okay. Coming around to the end. Put my last two double crochets in here. Chain two, and then one in this one, and down in this one. Okay, those two are nice and close together. I have a nice strong connection here. And I'm going to turn my work. Okay, coming around to the end. Put my last two double crochets in here. Chain two. And one in this one. And down in this one. Those two are nice and close together. I have a nice strong connection here. And I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to chain two. And put two in here. And chain two. Put two in here. I'm ready to start my next row. And you can see for my next row, I put two in the corner. I do my regular corners. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put one in between each of the bottom stitches here and do another corner. And that's what I'm doing around. So we just we're just going to go right down in between. See here? It's one. See here? 
and right down in between. Three, four, and then back to the corners. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. You see? I'm going to go ahead around. I'll meet you back here. Okay, I'm back around and I wanted to address again what I meant about the corner here. If I start here, I come around and I finish here. That's what I had to do on the bottom. So that when I came around, I would finish. I was going that way. I'd come around and I would finish here so I could come up and go back down in the hole. When you go around the second time, this is your last row. You don't have to. I went ahead and put the full corner in. And now all I have to do is slip stitch to this and I'm done. So I'm going to come here. And there we go. I like to do it this way where you have, where you turn back and forth. You don't have to. You could have it all facing front. But I like the, the extra dimension that you get by doing it backwards. You get this little ridge thing here. And in the middle, you get this little flower thing. And I really like that. I like that look. It just adds, like I said, a little extra dimension to it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on the next row. Okay, we took our brown center and we added this to it. And now it's time to add the next layer. This one looks similar to start with. It's very simple. This one has the three lines coming down into the brown. This one has five lines coming down into the blue. So we're going to be making a set of two coming across this bottom set into the next stitch and making one, two, three, four, five around these bottom four stitches. And then another set, finish our corner and go on to the other side. So take our next color. And there are so many different ways you can add these. The simplest way to add a new color so just pull a loop up, drop your tail, pull another loop up, just like that. And then do your two and go on. Now this is very well attached. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not like you have to make it really strong. But another way that I use is I'll just go around the two strands like that. And then tighten this down. That too bright for you. Do that again in case. You pull your loop up. Bring both your strands across and through. 
chain two, tighten your little second loop there, and go on from there. Okay, the third way, which can be a little tricky, you make a slip stitch. And keep it kind of on the loose side. You don't want to tighten it up. Hold the tail with your fingers. Wrap. Go through your, the, your loop here. See how I'm holding on to this? Bring it through your two loops. Through your two loops. Go in from there. Now if this ends up too tight, that's why you don't want this tight. Tighten up your loop. I'm trying to do this without my glasses on. That's fun. Okay. There you are. And you right to start with. You pull up your bottom loop. This I do only in an emergency, when I had to do it with the chain, and I didn't want a big mess. But it does correct something that you don't want to take the whole thing out and do it over again. Let's say you've got a big long line and you come down, down here and you got this big funky knot here. That's how you would do it. You want to loosen, loosen it up enough that you can pull this here to take care of your slack down here and pull it around, loosen enough until you can tie the knot and down on your loose area. And pull your loose in. See? Now I'm going to leave that because it's nice and neat and I have no problem with it. Okay, so on this row, we just we did our two and we're going to just come in and we're going to do singles along here. So one there, one double there, one double there, there, five of these. Just like that. We have the store, four stitches down here and we have the five up here. And then we do our corners. Whoops. Okay. That's how a side looks. My little graph here. Look behind it. We have our two coming off our corner, and then we're just going one, two, three, four, five, and back to our corner. So our chain two on each end. Okay, real simple. The next one's going to be a change up. This one is real simple. Okay. Now you go on around and I'm going to go to the end. I've got my, all my corners in. Got my five. I just need to add the end of my corner. Two. Go through the. Go through this stitch. 
go through the top of my chain. There we go, nice and together. Chain one, return, and I can either go down into here or just go up from here. So I'm going to chain two, go right back down in there, chain two, do my other set, and I've got a corner completed. Okay, now this one is a little different. So, check it out. We're going to do two sets of two on each end. So, a set here, and a set next to it. So, you can say that the set below has a set of two on each side of it. Then we're going to do one double crochet. Now here's our change up. We're going to put, we're going to decrease over this middle shaft. So we come down to here with part of our decrease. Come in here with our other, the other part of our decrease. Through all three loops on hook. We're going to do a double here. Then we're going to do a set here. The two double crochets and our corner. Which is two double crochets, chain two and whoop whoop. Get in there. Two double crochets. Okay, now again, the difference on this on this set is we have a set of two on this side of the lower set. Then we're going to put a set of two on this side of it. So set and set. Now down here we have five of these. We're going to double crochet into the first one. Then we're going to start a double crochet into the second one. Two loops on hook, leave those there. Yarn over, go into the next one. Four loops on hook, pull through two, three loops on hook, pull through three, and you've made a double crochet decrease straddling this center post here, this center stitch. Then you do a double crochet over here, and you're back to doing your two sets. Okay. And in our diagram, it looks like this. We have our one set, and we have our other set, and then we have a single, a single double crochet, and then we decrease straddling this one. Then we do another double crochet, and another set, and another set. And that's the second half of our next color. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this one. Got all sides done except the last one. And it really helps if you check your sides. You see here, 
I didn't do a connection. I was thinking about something else and didn't do my connection. So here's my set, my set, my single double, wrap and do half a double crochet, wrap and do half a double crochet through all three loops. That's why I have to go back and check each side before I go on to the next color. Because once you've cut off, if you've forgotten something important, it can be a real super pain. To go back and try to splice in just enough to put in the stitches that you missed. But I did already check all the other sides. I just didn't check that one. So before you tie off, you make sure you have your, take your corners, you look for your two sets, you look for your singles, you look for your um, decrease. Take your corners, look for your sets of two, your singles, and your decrease. Do that all the way around. Your corners, sets, singles, decrease. Okay, and then we're ready to la add our last color. Now, the last color adds a little bit of textured um, look to it. Instead of just being plain, we brought these pieces down in here. It breaks up the light and it gives it a more interesting design. See there? <coughs> so that's what we're adding with our next color. From here to there. Okay. Now, I'm going to make sure, let's see, I ended here. Make sure I'm in my, on my front. That's where I've got my bumpy flower. My second rows have their lines. See there? Make sure I'm on the front. And I'm going to use a different corner so I don't have my ends together. Much if your uh, yarn is real thick, you don't want to use that double method. Okay, so for this row, we get to have a little fun also. We're going to do two sets of two in a row, as we did on our Last set of, of uh, beige, brown, whatever. Now, you have this here, and it goes down to here. Right next to it, you have this one here with the hole, and you have this hole. You're going to come right into the hole next to your set, and you're going to do a double crochet. Now instead of coming down into here, we're going to pass it and go all the way down into here. And we're going to do it with a triple. So the hard, hardest part about this whole line is going to remembering to do a triple here, a double wrap. So you wrap and wrap. And you come down. Here's the hole you would go into. You go right down into the post under it. Through two, through two, through two. Here's your triple. Now yarn over. We're going to do a double over this guy. Remember this guy where we connected the two together, did a decrease? We're going to do a front post double over those two guys. And wrap, wrap, 
we're going to come down here. Now this is the post that was under the double, under the decrease. We're going to come to the next post. So that you have front post, skip, and front post. See? So you have two, two sets. The very next hole you do a regular double and you go down over the next hole all the way down to the post under it and you do a front post triple. And you take the part we decreased and you do a front post double. And you go down, skipping this one, the center one, you go to the next one and you do a front post triple. Now the next hole here, see here's your set. Your next hole here, you do a regular double. And then we're going to do two doubles in between these two sets on the bottom. And then come back over to our corner. do our corner set. Okay. That's what our first, or this, this level looks like. And this is what the diagram looks like. You have your set. You have your second set. And you come in between your set and your first post. And you make one double crochet. Then you come down here and you make all the way down through this hole, through this post on the bottom. And you make a triple crochet. The triple front post. In the next stitch you're going to straddle this. So you're going to come down and you're going to straddle this with a double front post. And then with the next stitch you come all the way through this hole down here and do a front post triple. Then you do a single double you do a set of doubles and then your last set of double going into your corner. Okay. And this is our, I guess you call it beige. Beige. Okay, now we're getting it. Now this is the first layer of our brown. Second one's easy. Second one is easy. And you go around, go ahead around and finish this one. I'm going to do this, this other side for you once more. And then I'm going to go on to the um, next row. So you're doing two sets of two. Then we're doing one here on the other side of this bottom set. Then we're going to wrap twice. And instead of going through this hole, we're going right down here to the post below it. And do a triple. Now we have this section here where we decreased and brought the two together. We're going to do a front post double around that. Okay. Then we're going to go down into the next stitch on the bottom.
See how this is over here. This straddle part is over this one. And this is the next stitch. And that's when we do the triple in. And we do one double. And then we do a set. Whoops. Before we go into our corner set. And here's our corner. It just adds a little textured, complicated look to it and takes away from the plainness. But you don't need to do it on each level or it would look too busy. This just adds enough. Okay, last side. Time to level up. Put my two in here. Oh, why is that? Oh, I'm all right. I swear I get so stupid sometimes it drives me nuts. I'm just going to do a little square knot here. This isn't like a, a super heavy duty area that's going to have a lot of tension on it, so I can get by with that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this again. Turn. I'll tell you, it's hard being a Chris sometimes. Okay, I want to chain two. This side's a little interesting. Get my first corner done here. It's not hard, just a little different. Now we have our double in the corner, our set. Okay, we're going to put a single in between the next two sets on the bottom. A single double. A set of two doubles. So a double, single, double. Now, see where these two come down here like fangs? There are four spaces back here that we can put stitches in. So we're going to do a double here, a sub one, a double here, a double on the other side of our center front post, and a double here, and that's four doubles, four single doubles. Then we're going to do a set of two on the other side of the thing. And a single and two. Complete the corner. I'm going to do that for you again. What we have here with our last our second round row is a fin the finish of the whole pattern.
All that's left is the border. So we're going to put our set here and we're going to come down and do a single double right here a set here and then between here and here we have room for one two three four one two three four then we'll do a set here a single here and a set here. And that, friends, is the end of our pattern piece. In the next set, after you do your corner, in the next set, you want to do one double. In the next hole on the other side of the bottom set, you want to do another set of two. Two doubles. And then you got your fangs. Little fangs coming down in here. And we're going to go, go one two, three, four. You should always have four between the fangs. The next one's easy. We're back to double and one and double. I tend to want to say single as in a single double crochet, but that's confusing. Here's what it looks like on the front side. We have our double in the corner and a single here between these two, a double here, and then see where we came down here for the first triple? You know, see, we got one through that. And we have our middle one, we have one here. Then we have our middle and our second triple, so we have one there. And then between our second triple and our our first uh, double here, we have one. So one, two, three, four. And these two here are our two things that show up in back. See? All right. Now let's go around. To the end. I guess I have the room to do that again. So we'll do a one double and a set and then one three, four, between the fangs, and then two, and one. We started, we started off with the corner with two sets of doubles. So I'm just going to go in here and tie it off. There we go. Now all that's left to do is the blue edging. To do the edging, I do it anywhere except Oh, that light's going to drive me nuts. There we go. I'm going to do it anywhere except on the corners. So I'll come through here. 
The edging is done through each stitch and not around the stitches or between them. So I come in the top of any stitch just like that. Now I'm going to put one more stitch in it. I have no problem with my single with my first stitch. This stitch will become the top of the stitch in front and this becomes where I finish my um, edging. That's why I added a little extra loop there. Now for a barred single or a barred slip stitch you drag your thread over the front. So you just take your hook behind, you drag it to the front, you put your hook in your next hole, pull the thread so it doesn't get in the way, pull your loop up, pull your loop through two, drag it up, put your hook in, hold it, pull it through, pull it through. Whoops. I don't think the hook was listening. Drag it forward, push it through, hold it, pull it through, pull it through. Now if you don't hold on to it, you have to do a little twisty turny thing here. Pull it through, pull it through here. You can do your whole little twisty turny thing like that. But it, the um, bars, the front bars stay more consistent if you hold them. See, I held this one, this one, this one, this one I didn't, that one I didn't. So if you want to maintain the consistency, just go through. And when you put your hook down like that to go grab the material, it's the perfect time to grab onto the bar. Because it's already down there laying deep into your material. You don't want to grab it now, it's up there. You bring it down here. It's right down here where you can grab it. Just like that. See? Now a barred single stands up absolutely on the edge. Absolutely edge on. Can you see that? It's not slanting in either direction. You can't see the top from this side. You can't see the top from this side. You only see it edge on. And that's ideal for a lot of situations. It's what I'm going to use for my connection process. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this line when I get to the corner, draw it over, go through the corner chains, just like that. This is going to be a look a little funkier. Chain two, come over, go through, bring it through, up. See? Now it looks okay. going down the other side and I'll meet you around at the end. Meet you back here. Back around here to the beginning. See how this here belongs to this stitch? This belongs to this stitch. So the one on my hook belongs to this stitch. Now I can put it through here and just do that and it makes a big knot around this bar. That's why I will go around the back of the, the one over the next stitch. And then I come back and I go through the top. Of the chain 
that belongs to the current stitch when I want to attach to. Now, let me go ahead and cut this. You have this that belongs to this stitch. You have this that belongs to this stitch. This belongs to this stitch, and this belongs to this. So you have your knot with a stitch on both sides. You don't have to go through your knot and mess it up. When I come back, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my tiles. And when I come back, um, I'll discuss the different ways of connecting these. Okay? See you later. Now this is sewing it together. I've got my line marked here at approximately three times the length that I'm going to be sewing. You want to go through the place where you have your chain two. Through the place where you have your chain two. And I'm going to go through there again. So a double whammy. Okay. Now, since this isn't a cutoff tail, I'm going to stick it back here where I won't get it confused with the rest of what I'm doing. Because I'm going to undo all this when I'm done. Now, here's your edges. You make sure you go into the loop, just like you did for the slip stitch, that belongs on the other side. Now, that's this loop here. Okay, and I don't know if you've ever darned, but when you do, you come through your loop. And it kind of gives it a self-locking. So you go through, oops, okay, through the second one, through the second one. Oh boy. Okay, let's try this again. Through here, that's the second hole. Through here, that's the second hole. And what you can do is just wrap your yarn around it like that. It's faster than putting it through the loop. Go through the third hole. Third hole. Put your yarn around your yarn around your your needle. Pull it through. Every stitch you want to tug it a little bit to make sure it's not gathering. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Round the needle, pull it through, to the back, to the back, around the needle, pull it through. Round the back, to the back. Wrap the yarn around the needle, pull it through. Now this gives you a low self-locking. I don't think it looks as attractive as the slip stitch, but it's a lot narrower, lower. And on the other side, it spreads more. So you have a little bit more of a spread. I think it's because you don't have double loops of material going through there. But it gives you a very distinctive double bar look. Okay?
that way. There it is with the slip stitch. There it is with that. The difference is you can see these little things across it. So whichever way you're more comfortable with will work. Okay. Here you can see the little doubles going across. That's where you did your slip stitch. And here you can see the little single slants going across. That's where you did your um, needle stitch. Now one way that I would not recommend, and I'll show you that now. If I can get my stuff back around here. Okay. And that is going through both of them, going through both sides. Um, you lose your bar on top. Whoops. For this one, I think I'm not going to lock. Well, yeah, I can go ahead and lock it. I can still undo it. It's just a real pain in the neck to undo. The only difference between this one and that one is you're going through both of these. Front and back, front and back. I don't like to do it sewing way because the way it pulls back when you lock it, it makes it look like you're in the wrong, uh, wrong spot. This is what happens. This is the time, type of look you get when you sew both sides together. See here? It is, looks just the same on the bottom as when you go through one. It's a little bit flatter, not much. But you have a total one one piece look on top. Like you just crocheted this and then went on ahead and crocheted that together. And all you have is these little stitches here. So I'm going to go back and I want to do my preferred way. Just this. Now I will be doing the rest of them the way I like to do mine. So I'm going to put these two face to face again. And I'm going to slip stitch the back. Again, you start by going th entirely through the holes where you have your two chain area, chain two area. And I'm going to go through both loops. But I want this really secure here. Now. Once you have your first two lined up, the rest fall right into place. So here's my first two stitches. Just like there. Two here, two back. Remember to pull it up slightly. You don't want it real hard, real tight, because it will bunch your pieces together. So when you go through and come up, just come up like that. And you can see the length of your stitch is about the length of your stitches below. And you're ready for it. And again, you can see where I'm going through the back. This is doubled because of the way I round things around. Here's the front one, so I'm not touching it. Go over the back, go into the back one. I think that's where I messed up with the needle. Trying to go through the back loops. 
If you're not sure, you can just take a quick pick. Yep. Now, on your corners, you have your left, you have your two stitches here. Make sure you don't go into your last stitch. You don't really need to. You want to go into this corner instead. Check out on the other side. Now, see, I mismatched here. In that case, I'm going to go ahead and go through to fix my boo-boo. I'm going to come around and through, tighten it. Make sure the stitches are good length. This is what my front looks like. Here's the knotted area. Okay, so here's where I crocheted it together. You see it's got, it's a rather a deep dip. On the surface it looks like they're lying very close together. Going through both ends makes it very strong here. See your corners will always be strongly connected. Now, I'm connecting mine diagonally, so I'm walking my triangles off in the same direction because I want to have a long slanting walkway. So to start with, I take, I place them where I want them. I take the first area I'm going to work with and I fold my edge over just like that. I think the reason, besides I'm not all that big of a fan of sewing them together, I like the idea of I don't have to worry about how much thread I have. It's still connected to the skein. I just keep on trucking. Okay. Now you already know how to do these corners. I'm going to work over here and I'm going to show you how to do these corners, okay? I'm at the other end. Here's my two space. Here's my two space. I'm matched up properly like I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to go through both of these over here. Pull a loop. I'm going to pull another loop and tighten it. Now I need to connect here's the connection I just did. Now I need to connect this side of this piece. So I'm going to take and fold this over this way. So I just finished going this way and now I'm going to go across here but I'm going to go back to here again like that and pull up a loop and tighten. Now I'm ready to go on trucking down here. I'm going to go through the outside here looking back and make sure I got the right loop. through and up. Come on, there we go. Now I'm going to have one more corner 
and I'll treat it the same way. You have three full lines of these you have to do. Now if you're sewing, it's really easier to go to add one hexagon at a time and not double them up. For using the slip stitch method with crochet, it's easier to connect them by twos and, and put them on that away. Okay. And at the end. Nobody matches up this time. Okay, now I go through my two holes. My chain two area. Go into my chain two area across. Slip stitch. Bring up a little stitch. And tighten. Now here's the next two lines that go together. I'll show it to you this way. We started here, came down and connected this corner. Then we came over and we're connecting this corner. And then we're going to collect, connect this line, okay? So I just connected, finished connecting over here. And this already has a connection here from when I connected the two together. So I'm going to go with you here. And I'm going to go over here. Bring up a loop and tighten it. And then you just go on and finish your line. Okay, now we're coming to the point. We've got our two together. And we're going to add a third. And this will give you a two run. And then when you add your next one, again, it'll be adding two. And you can do that whether you're going around or across down, whatever. It's really the easiest way to do it. You're only dealing with two sides and one junction. Okay, so to start with, putting my face to face here. And you, and you do it just like you do the, the two pieces up until you reach the junction. Put it through your two, your chain two spaces. Bring both lines through. Gives you a good tight junction. Okay. I'm going to go through the first stitch here. Make sure you have the first stitch on the other side. And you're in business. And I'll show you how to do the three-way junction in just a second. I'm at the junction now. Here's my chain two space. Here's my chain two space. Bring it through and through. Bring up one more loop and snug it. You don't want to pull it real tight, but snugging helps. Now. This piece, even though it's connected to this one, also needs to be connected to the other piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it around, go through the, go through the two of this one, and back into the two of the existing piece that we added this one onto, this side, and pull it through 
and pull a loop and snug it. Now we're ready to go down this lake. Just a simple turning a corner. Make sure I'm in the first stitch in this one. First stitch in that one. I'm caught under something. There we go. Now here's my two. Here's my two. Same on the other side. It came out even. Good, good, good. Bring it through and through. And that's all there to it. Now when you cut your length, it doesn't have to be super long, but you know how long your darning needle is. And it's a good idea to make sure it is at least a little more than double the length of your darning needle. And that's because you want to go down the length of the darning needle, turn around, loop through any other part so it doesn't pull back on itself, and then go back the same line you came. And if you use a motion a little like this when you go back, chances are you'll be able to snag onto some of your thread on the way back and it really locks it. So you go down this way and then you turn around on one thread and you come back this way and you'll have plenty of room for your needle. Now, if I was going to make this round, I would have, I would add one on and then I'd add another one and another one and another one and I keep going around like that and you'd have your three foot wide uh, throw rug. So all I have to do now is add one more on and then I'll be starting the borders. Okay, I have already started the border mainly because I wanted to see how it was going to go and I decided to go with a plain single uh, crochet along first because that will give me the extra strength I need here at the junctions. Uh, half double crochet allows too much of a spread. So I'll show you how you treat the apexes and the bottom of the V's. Very simple. We're using only the back of the loops as we go up. And on the top we have the chain two. So we go in one side. You notice I'm not going through the hole. I'm going in back of it. Make a single, chain one, come back in the back of the second one. I went through two there. Don't need two lines, just one. Come on, be good. I think it's twisted. There we go. And then you go on down the line with the singles in the back. And this makes this edge stand out real nice just like it does on the uh, corners. I'll do more crocheting and less talking so I can get there faster. Now I'm doing the bottom of the V's. We're going to still go behind the stitches. So here's the one right before the two space. Now we're going to go into the back of this stitch, for the stitch closest to the side. Then we're going to come over here. This stitch belongs to this post. So this stitch here is the last one on this side. Can you see that? This goes into this post. So the one in front of it is the side stitch. Like that. 
Now you can easily see when it comes to the next line that you have these two crossing over and the bar right above it belongs to the stitch we'll be going into for the bottom of the V. Okay? Let me just go ahead and single stitch up the side and you treat every top the way we did this one. So you have your two space, you go into the top of the first chain in the space and then you chain one and then you go to into the top of the second chain of the space. And on the bottom you come right up to the stitch before, identify the stitch after, and then you can identify the stitch on either side that belongs to the center stitch. You go into the back of that one, pull up a loop, go directly into that one and pull up a loop and pull a loop through all three and that'll give you your little crisscross at the bottom. And as you can see, it keeps up the continuity of the line going around. Doesn't break it up. So go ahead and finish that and we'll start on the um, second row. Okay, I came around finished my single single crochet border here. I'm going to chain up two, yarn over, and I'm going to go through both loops front and back right through the single crochet and do a half double crochet. Looks like I have an extra loop there. Don't want it too high. Now a half double crochet, yarn over, go through the stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on hook, yarn over, go through all three. And that's your half double crochet. Now, see your corner piece and your stitch here? The one on either side of it are, and that one are the ones you want to use for this. Yarn over, go through, pull up a stitch, go through, pull up a stitch, go through, pull up a stitch. Pull through all three, or all, all but one, and then through the last two. Let's do that again. Yeah. So let's do that again. We found the center one, the one that has a little cross on it, a little crossover. So we yarn over, one loop, one hook. Go through and pull up a loop, that's two. Go through and pull up a loop, that's three. Go through and pull up a loop. That's four. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, plus our wrap. Pull through all four of these bottom ones and then through the next one. See? Got a nice little bunch there. And then go on and do your half double crochets. Whoops, I just did a double. <sighs> Okay, let's do a quick walk up to the apex. Okay, now here's the apex. See the two here? The, this is the single. <clears throat> here's your space down here. And you put one single space and one in that, in those two stitches. So we're going to come over here, this is the one before it, and into that single space we're going to do four half doubles. One, two, three, four. And that brings us right around at a right angle to our material where we can come straight down and do another half double and on down the side. You see if I added on to that I'd be adding a little bump to it. If I put less than that it would be drawing in. Four is just the right number for that because you start at an angle here, or you start straight out here 
these two bring you up to the apex pointing the way these two bring you back to perpendicular to the other side so four is just the right amount so go on and do your half double border all the way around going through both both loops of the single and I'll meet you back around One more note about the uh, bottom corner and the top corner. Some of you are going to be scratching your head and say, how come we're connecting three on the bottom, but we're adding four on the top? Because in most of your V formations, as above, so below, just mirrors it. Well, if you look on here, I'm going to take this apart again. Okay, now here's my chain one space. And this one right here actually belongs to here. See that? But I don't use that one. What I'm doing is I'm going through here and making my four. One, two, three, four. So what I'm actually doing in reality is I am adding three on the top, but the fourth one is actually taking over the space that this stitch here would have. So in reality, it is actually only putting three and one in the top, but I'm taking over this guy's space and I'm adding the fourth one. This gives me a center another center here if I need it on the next row without having to add a space. So no, you didn't go crazy. No, the rules haven't suddenly changed. You have three together down here and you have three on the top. Okay. Okay. Okay guys, here's my uh, here's my old rug. I changed my mind and decided to uh, just put the one row around it. I may change my mind again. If I do, it'll just be the brown. But that perfectly covers my difficult area. About three years ago, I had some people tramp in some really black gunk that would not shampoo out of my carpet. And I've had all manners of runners and stuff on the floor, but this just suits me. It's pretty and it's made to order. So there's the project, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy making it. Add what colors you want around the outside. Um, you will be doing the same thing around the outside as we did in the last row. I wanted to uh, cover what to do if you want to add more colors um, or more rows I should say. The next row after your half double should be a single and you'll do it just like we did the brown single. And you'll connect this one, this one, and this one into one single crochet. On the apex, you have these four stitches, and you have your hole in between. You will do your single, chain one, and single in that apex right there. So you're adding your three on the top, and you're reducing your three on the bottom. And then you go back and you repeat the half double we just did, connecting it the same way and finishing the top the same way. And you'll have a lovely throw rug or bed throw, lap throw. Are you going to make a circle one? Are you going to make a long one? I'd like to know what you're going to do. I really enjoyed doing this with you. And I very much hope that uh, you'll share with me anything you do. And join me again on my next videos. 
Have a great time crocheting, people. Bye.